Afternoon all. Now these are my two Technoline BL700 battery chargers. They charge uh, nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium, if you've still got any nickel cadmiums, uh, AA and AAA size. Now these two battery chargers were identical, but not anymore, because one of them is burnt. Now I was tidying my desk the other day, so I cable tied the two power cables together so they wouldn't fall off the back of the desk. But I forgot that one of them comes from a 3 volt um, DC to DC adapter, 12 volts in, 3 volts out. And the other one comes just from a regular cigarette lighter plug. So of course one of these is 3 volts and one is 12 volts, I think that is the 12 volts. And uh, I accidentally put 12 volts into this battery charger. Oh dear. Now the 3 volt, 12 volt thing was never a problem while I was using this thing. This is a really nice uh, switch mode power supply. Put 12 volts in and it powers up. And it's currently set to 3 volts out. That can be changed. There's a little button on the end and you can press it. I think you have to press it, do a long press. That's it. And then you can whip it through various different voltage levels, six, seven and a half, nine, twelve, one and a half and back to three. So I just left that on three, three volts. So that's perfect for the battery charger. It also tells you the voltage of the uh, source. So currently my solar power system batteries are at uh, 13 and a half volts and that's because the sun's out today. So then you plug that three volt output into the Technoline. That powers up. Technoline doesn't have a very uh, well lit display. That's one of the issues with it really. Or I should say another of the issues. Right, put a couple of cells in there and uh, they start charging up. Although actually only one of these has started charging up. And that's because another thing about this Technoline is that if a cell is at zero volts or at a very, very low voltage, which this one is, it doesn't immediately see it. After a while, it probably will rise up and it'll pick it up and start charging it, but it's not charging it at the moment. Now there is another issue with this uh, Technoline charger, and that is that the default charge current is 200 milliamps. You can change that. I'm not sure whether you can change it while it's charging. Let's have a go. Let's press and hold current. No, I don't think you can. I think you have to do it when you initially put the cells in. If I take the power off and put it back on, um, the first thing it does is tell you the battery voltage. Then it tells you what it's going to charge at, what current. And if you press it now, you can change that. So that's now going to charge at 500 milliamps. And at 500 milliamps, the Delta V system works much better. It's much better at uh, detecting end of charge. But apart from the rather poorly lit display, or the unlit display, it has no backlighting at all, um, the inability to see completely flat batteries, the default 200 milliamp uh, charge current, this is a really good battery charger, and I mean that. This is one of my favorite battery chargers. But this three volt thing is very silly, and eventually you're gonna get caught out and stick 12 volts in it and blow it up. I think we're gonna have to have a look inside this thing. So let's undo these four screws on the uh, bottom plastic panel. So this is what's inside. Uh, there's a microcontroller here covered in the uh, obligatory black gunk. Lots of uh, surface mount uh, transistors, resistors. There's a, a smell of burning. I can still smell it and uh, you can see I don't know whether you can see this, I'll get in close in a minute, but uh, some of these transistors are burnt out, some of the resistors are burnt out. Uh, this is the 3 volt power connector up here. So let's get in a bit closer to uh, the components that, uh, that burnt out. So we can see that uh, there are four transistors up here. Um, this one's split, that's broken in half, that one seems to be okay. This one there's a little sweat mark on, so I think that one got hot. And this one seems to be okay. Now also in these resistors, it's not so easy to see, but 
these four have got hot, these four are fine, these four are burnt, and these four are fine. So I think what happened was I had two cells in this, and I often do put them in sort of positions one and three, although that's of course it's back to front because I'm looking at the back. But um, I think where these components have burnt out is where I had cells in the battery charger and I put 12 volts onto it. So getting a bit closer and I mean you can clearly see that this component here has burnt and split in half. These 7.5 ohm resistors uh, have burn marks on them. The 1 ohm resistors above them look okay. I assume they're 1 ohm, 1R00. Now all these resistors here are fine. There's a resistor missing there actually, that's interesting. They've only put three in there. There are three in here as well. These 7.5 ohm resistors, there's a little sort of blister mark on them. And then in the fourth channel, again, they're okay. So although it looks like two of these channels have a lot of their components burnt out, and the other two don't seem to have any burnt out components, I don't think that's the major problem because this chip clearly runs directly off three volts and I can't see that there are many components around here that would protect this chip against 12 volts being put in on the input socket here. So pretty certain this chip's gone and if that chip's blown well then the whole thing is for the trash. Now while I'm inside this thing I might as well remove the remaining screws and take a look at the uh, top side of this board. So that's all coming apart and I suspect all the buttons are going to fall out. Yes they have. Okay so there's not much on the top side, all the buttons. Uh, also the display and the display is connected down onto the board uh, on these pads here and it has the usual zebra stripe. Let's take a closer look at that. So as I say, these are the connections on the board and then they go up through this uh, zebra stripe onto the liquid crystal itself, which is uh, up here. That's very interesting. You can just about make out the individual uh, conducting and non-conducting layers that are in this stripe. And I've got a theory about this. I reckon that the density of the connections in here relative to the density of the connections here must be greater than two to one. I think it's the same as the Nyquist sampling ratio. And there's a, just a little close up of the zebra stripe and the uh, tracks on the PCB, the pads on the printed circuit board. And uh, with the magnifying glass I've now caught that in the light better so you can see those layers of the zebra stripe uh, and that's right down on the circuit board now so you can see the ratio of the size of the or the pitch of the pads on the board and the stripes on the uh, conductive rubber. Now you can also see mounted up on these little plastic perches two thermistors and they're sitting, you can see the two wires running into the thermistor and it's sitting up on top of that plastic mount. Camera focus please. So there's another shot of the two thermistors. Uh, the far one is at least in focus and you can see that's how that's mounted up on its little plastic perch. And those thermistors sit up inside these little metal um, sort of inverted v-shape things. So you're only measuring the temperature uh, of two cells together there are two temperature measurements, it's sharing it between two cells. But that's how it does the end of charge detection if the cell starts getting very warm. Uh, there's also a timer, there's also a total charge, end of charge detection. And then of course there's the main one, which is the delta V. That's the one that um, watches for a tiny dip in the voltage of the cells, which is characteristic of the uh, end of their charge sequence. But I don't think there's much point holding on to any of this because uh, there's very little point repairing this board because the microcontroller is almost certainly fried. I mean, if, even if I could get these components, uh, I could potentially replace them, but uh, there's no way I can replace that. 
but I think it might be worth hanging on to the LCD just in case the one in the other uh, battery charger gets broken or something like that perhaps. So if you were to uh, ask me which was my favourite nickel metal hydride battery charger, um, in the past I would have said the BL700, but now after my experience of blowing one up by uh, not having the proper 3 volt DC to DC converter, I'm probably going to err on the side of the PowerX, or what's it called, it's got a huge name, Maha uh, MHC9000 Wizard 1 Charger Analyzer. It's big and solid, the uh, display is very well lit, although you have to have it on axis, it's, uh, it's very poor if it's off axis. Um, it can take anything from I think about 10 volts to 15, so it's very tolerant of uh, the power supply not being exactly 12 volts. Uh, the default charge rate is uh, 1 amp, that would have been nice if it was about half an amp, in fact it would be even nicer if it was um, programmable, if you could in some way set it, but you can't. Now I understand that there is a 12 volt version of this uh, available now, I'm not sure whether it's uh, just the same thing with a 12 to 3 volt DC to DC converter built in, or whether it's a completely different design, it does look very similar. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure it'll pop up in the comments. And uh, if you're interested in this uh, DC to DC converter, which I really like, because I like the fact that it displays the input supply voltage, so I know what voltage my batteries outside the house are currently at. Um, it's available from Maplin. This is um, A79GW, that's the part code. There's my bit of uh, blue tack. Um, there's the specification. You can run it on 24 volt systems, it kind of rejigs itself. Um, uh, it uh, provides a 12 volt output on 24 volt systems. It doesn't do that, I don't think, uh, on a 12 volt. It also has USB, but it's only 600 milliamps, so it's pretty useless in that respect. But I've never seen this thing on eBay, so I can't um, give any advice on where to get it if you're not in the UK. So there it is, there's my one remaining Technoline BL700 charging these two cells. It's actually picked up that other cell now, so it's now charging both of them. It generally does eventually. In fact, I think what happens is that the one that charges gets warm, transfers a bit of heat into the other one, and then its voltage comes up. This sees that voltage and then starts charging, and I think that's what happened. Um, yes, and here's my burnt out Technoline uh, BL700, entirely my fault of course that uh, it burnt out, I put 12 volts in where it can only take 3 volts, but this 3 volt thing is a bit annoying isn't it? Cheerio!